our earlier chapter, we have discussed at length the differentiation. So what the calculus world talks about is the integration is nothing but the reversal of differentiation. Right? So in our earlier chapter when we said x squared, the differentiation of x squared is 2x. It means if I do the integration of 2x, typically written with something like this, the integration of 2x is nothing but x squared. Right? Uh, so this is uh, one of the simple relationships that exists between integration and differentiation. Sometimes, if someone asks you to integrate, uh, as a simple question, if suppose there is a question which says, uh, do the integration of x cube. The simple way to try to understand this is, in your option choices, try to differentiate if you are not comfortable with integration. And if the question is as simple as this, probably try to differentiate or find the derivative of your answers. And whichever answer gives a value equal, whichever the derivative gives a value of x power 3 or x cube will be your answer. So that's one more way you can use your derivatives or differentiation to do the integration. But yes, keeping that thing aside, it's better to understand the world of integration because not everywhere we work only with the multiple choice world. And probably uh, as a, a space in the actuarial sciences, we have to use the fundamentals of integration at a lot of places. So having a grip on the world of integration and differential equations and these kind of concepts definitely adds value to our analysis. So with that as a background, let's get started. As I just now said, derivative integration is nothing but the reversal of differentiation. So, that's one thing. And integrals, typically they are represented with something like this. So, integral of x squared. Sometimes what happens is, there won't be any boundaries here. It is like indefinite integral. When nothing is mentioned as a lower limit and upper limit in the, in, in the integration, we call them as indefinite integrals. Whereas when I see some numbers here, probably 3 to 4, some numbers, when I see some quantities here as the lower limit and the upper limit, we call those kind of integrals as definite integrals. Right? Lot of applications which we use in the real world will be evaluated as definite integrals itself. The moment we get comfortable with the indefinite integrals concept, we can very well apply the definite integrals concept also to that. And the prime reason why we do an integration is to find the areas or to do the summations over a continuous period of time. Summation over continuous period of time. If, if the summation is at discrete periods of time, probably we can use sigma. But if the summation is over continuous periods of time, sigma becomes, sigma is what will get translated into your integral. So, in, so that's the kind of relationship you can think of. Whenever I, ha I want to find out the area between underneath a curve or summation of something over a continuous period of time, I would refer to or I would depend on the usage of integration. So, just like the, the